All right, hey everyone. My name is Dakoba and welcome back to Factory Town. Today we're going to take a look at level two of the campaign. Let's pop in and get started. Now, our first episode was very much about the basics of the game and how it plays out. Today we're going to focus more on how to set things up efficiently and how to sort of move through the game at a slightly quicker pace and do things that are going to serve us well throughout the rest of the campaign and through the other levels and in any free play games that we want to do as well. All right, now when we first get started in a new map of level two, you can see that we have a lot going on. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have secure production of some basic materials, though. That's going to be wood, planks, stone, stone bricks, and then a basic conveyor belt. And it looks like we have cloth conveyor belts up here, but I believe those are actually locked behind some research. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and set up some wooden conveyor belts there. Let's go ahead and add that to our panel. And let's go ahead and get started by setting up some basic wood and planks. Now, one of the things you can do when you are getting started on a new map is set up isolated stations for doing certain tasks. I, in general, we want as much of our town to be within sort of the radius of our town center as possible, but we don't have to put anything there if we don't want to. We can still finish the game even if we don't. And uh, wood and planks are generated at a quick enough rate that they don't benefit as much from being in a town center radius. So we're gonna go ahead and find a nice spot on the map uh, somewhere away, uh, maybe down here on this island, where we can set up a simple processing plant to gather up both planks and wood. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna need a lumber mill. So we'll go ahead and set that up. And then we're also going to need a barn. And barns are special because they act as a unified storage that can be accessed anywhere on the map. So anything we store in this barn, we can use as a building material. And that's what we want out of our planks and wood. So we're gonna set up a, a worker to gather wood, another one to gather wood and take that to our barn or to our lumber mill to turn it into planks. And then another one to pick up the planks that are produced and drop those off at the barn as well. Now we're gonna set the barn to have a couple filters on it. In particular, we're going to only allow wood in two of the slots, and we're going to only allow planks in the other two spots. What this means is that this barn will eventually fill and will so sort of store a hundred of each and won't you know, overflow with wood before it fills up with planks. If we wanted, we have enough wood and planks that we could even double the size of this so if we upgrade that, we can see that this barn will now hold 200 of each, and that will be plenty to see us through uh, even, you know, the mid-sized construction projects. We probably, we almost certainly won't be using any more than that on this map. But moving on to our stone production, we do have this place where we have a single worker producing stone that's going into a barn along with some logs from another worker. Uh, again, I don't think we actually need that worker. We'll go ahead and delete that and we'll just consume up those logs over time eventually and then replace them with more stone. Uh, and then the half the stone is going into the barn, the other half is going to be turned into bricks. Um, we're going to need a fair bit of stone and stone bricks, so I'm actually going to take one of those workers and set that person to gather stone as well. And that should just about do it. I think that will square us away for stone for quite a long time. The last thing we wanted to do is set up some basic conveyor belts. Now we have eight wooden conveyor belts. We can actually go ahead and take advantage of one of those to free up this worker here. Let's go ahead and set up a conveyor belt. All right, now we're gonna build a conveyor belt to replace that worker, but we're gonna go ahead and hold shift and press five to place that on our hotbar so that we have easy access to those wooden conveyor belts. Uh, you can use shift and then the number to uh, access any of the hotbars, and then there are actually four hotbars that you can cycle by saying F1 through F4. All right, and with that squared away, let's go ahead and set up another couple of workers and a lumber mill. For making the wooden conveyor belts, we're also going to need a workshop for this one and another barn. Uh, it looks like we don't have barns on our menu either, so let's go ahead and add those. Uh, we'll, we'll add those to the zero key there, just like so. All right, now these workers, one of them is gonna have to deliver to the workshop directly. The other one's gonna have to deliver wood to the lumber mill, which will turn it into planks. And then we can use our wooden conveyor belts to deliver the planks to the workshop and the conveyor belts to the barn. And so we should see our number of conveyor belts start to tick up as things flow in. Here we go, and there we go. All right. All right, and with our basic materials out of the way, we're, it's time for us to start looking at research. Now, right now, all of our research, or nearly all of our research, is locked behind uh, tech level three. So we're gonna have to set up something that will produce wooden wheels. Let's go ahead and set up another workshop and another barn. 
and this workshop will produce our wood wheels and we'll go ahead and just use wooden conveyors out of our existing lumber mill to bring planks to that workshop and then wheels into the barn. Now this lumber mill is gonna be starved for, starved for planks and that may slow down our conveyor belt production. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let that run for a minute while we take a look at a couple other things. If we end up needing more, we can always add some more workers here, but eventually we're gonna replace this with a forester and that's gonna greatly increase the amount of wood we're producing. So we're, I'm holding off for that reason. While we wait for those wood wheels to be produced, let's go ahead and reorganize our town so that it's a little bit more efficient. All right, now I've gone ahead and moved some houses around and this is gonna give us a much more efficient layout. We're gonna be able to create rows of houses sticking off our main commercial center here. And we can go ahead and place any structures we want to uh, have access to those houses along the central block. We'll also be able to double up the road behind this in order to create a more efficient access path in case we have multiple vehicles coming in from uh, sort of behind, they can navigate each other there. We've also completed our level three tech level. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's unlocked. Uh, in particular, that's given us a couple of important technologies in terms of farming and forestry. Let's go ahead and take a look at farming because that's gonna be relevant to our next task. All right, now farms are used to gather up various crops. You can see the uh, we started out the map with a farm gathering a bunch of wheat, and you can see this is automatically producing a great deal of wheat, far more than we need, actually. So I think we can go ahead and wipe out these two workers, and if needed, we can actually increase the number of workers at this farm, and it will sort of just make up the difference there. Now, one of the main advantages of farms is that they replant crops. And so one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be transitioning from making paper and hauling paper one page at a time over to our school uh, to making um, to making books. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy who's hauling paper, have him instead haul that over here to this workshop. Now, this workshop is already set to produce books and cloth, uh, but in order to make cloth, it needs cotton. So we could set a worker to gather this cotton but by using a farm it will actually automatically replenish itself and so now that will automatically harvest uh, all of that cotton and feed it into our our uh, workshop to produce the books and we can actually take this worker who's hauling paper and instead have him haul the books and take those over to the schoolhouse up the books and up them off and then we can use a conveyor belt to take the paper and deliver that at our workshop and that will be just fine. That'll do everything we need it to do. And this is greatly gonna increase the amount of uh, research we get. Now we're gonna, we're gonna hold off for a couple minutes until we get up to 100 research, which should be just uh, three more books. So it should be real quick and then we'll take a look at forestry. All right, we've got our 100 books now. So if we go back into our research tab, then we can see that we now have enough to unlock forestry. So let's go ahead and pick that up. And the forester works a lot like the farm, except instead of gathering crops, it gathers from trees. So it's used to gather up wood as well as pears and apples. And what this means is that we can come down here, for example, to where we've got uh, these two workers who are gathering wood and hauling that to separate structures, and we can place a forester. A forester will automatically gather any wood with its, within its area, and it'll autom also automatically replant those trees for free. Uh, and that means that this is a much more efficient use of this space. It's also a fair bit faster than a worker, not the least because it doesn't need to sort of haul the wood uh, from the tree to its destination. It just sort of does it all in-house. Now I'm gonna leave this forester with three workers in it. I think that's the right amount. And over here, you can see we have two workers uh, who are providing the wood for our barn as well as for our planks. So let's go ahead and just wipe those workers out, grab a forester in their place. And because there are two types of trees here, we actually have to set this to gather wood. Uh, and then we can go ahead and use uh, either shoots or, plant or conveyors to haul that wood directly into the various structures that will take advantage of it. All right, next, I think we're gonna need to start increasing the amount of coins that we're producing, both yellow and red. Red, because we're gonna need a bunch for some more advanced research and we aren't currently generating any. And yellow, because while we have enough to cover most of our research, uh, we are gonna need a lot for something else. And let's explain what that is. We're gonna do something here with a forester. We're gonna set this back here uh, near to all these apple trees. And we're gonna set this to harvest uh, apples as well as pears. 
And then what we're actually gonna do is go into our build menu and under farming and mining, you can see that we've got the pear trees here, but these cost 100 yellow coins a piece to plant. We're gonna go ahead and plant uh, three or four of these. Uh, let's do five. Um, and those will take some time to grow, but when they grow, they will start to produce pears. So each tree will produce 12 pears. If we go over to our food market and take a look at what that is worth, each pear is worth two coins. So uh, essentially these pears will grow over the course of three or four minutes and will then restore about a quarter of their cost, about 24 coins to us by allowing us to sell them at the food market. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to set up uh, a way to get those there. And so we could have a worker deliver that, but we could also do this with conveyor belts. But we have the problem that we don't want those conveyor belts to block the path. So we're gonna go ahead and grab these wood pillars and we're gonna pillar up twice. We're gonna do that on both sides. And then we're gonna use the scaffolding arch and the wood scaffold blocks to create a bridge. And then we'll be able to take a chute and grab apples and pears. And those will naturally flow out of our forester and into our food market. And you can see that's uh, greatly uh, increasing the amount of yellow coins that we're generating just by naturally getting that, that very slow trickle. All right, let's go through what we've got here. Uh, we went ahead and set up a farm down here and we're gathering up right now some grains. We're also gonna get some carrots and potatoes out of here, but we're sending those up a conveyor and down a chute over to our uh, food market, which is distributing it to the houses. So that's gonna give us the opportunity to increase our population level and build some more houses, which will increase the number of workers. And so we can go uh, on and on and around until we have sort of won the game. All right, now with our houses all set up, it looks like we have unlocked our first town specialization. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now town specialization allows certain production buildings to produce double items occasionally. So if we take a look at the forestry specialization here, we can see that this will benefit the production of planks, apples, pears, logs, wooden wheels, axes, fluid pipes, and dragon fruit and it's gonna give us the double output chance of 60%. That simply means that whenever we make any of those items, we have a 60% chance of producing a second one for free. And this is a huge benefit. Let's go ahead and select that and turn it on. Now, right now that's gonna affect our forestry plants as well as our uh, uh, lumber mill here. And it's going to work on any buildings that are placed within the town center. So we have the opportunity of fixing that. We also can change that later on if we want to unlock something different. So for example, the processing specialization will work on a number of other objects that may be more useful to us. So it'll include things like making books for research or stone bricks or food. And so that might be something we want to do. Now that's currently locked behind the intermediate logistics research but that might be a good target for us to start working on right now. So let's take a look and see what that's gonna require. At intermediate Logistics, it turns out we have just enough red coins for and plenty of research, so let's go ahead and unlock that. And now if we go back and go to change our specialization, we'll see that that processing specialization is unlocked. Uh, we can select that. You'll notice that it has a only a 30% chance, but affects a large variety of products. So. I still think this is the right move for us in this town, particularly as we build things like a kitchen and start making, you know, bread and more food and, and a wider variety of products. And it's going to serve us better than the processing or than the forestry specialization. There's also farming, which obviously allows for the production of raw materials through farms and fishing. And then commerce is used to provide sort of a double output chance for coins. All right, our next step is gonna to be to set up some animal pastures and start working on some of the animal products that we're gonna need. These are gonna go a long way towards meeting our victory conditions in the production of warm coats and sandwiches, as well as unlocking tech level four, which we'll also need to do. So let's go ahead and set up an animal pasture over here near our food mill. This food mill is gonna be used, uh, if we take a look at the recipes, we can see it also produces animal feed and, and you can see it's highlighted in yellow. We have the double, double uh, production chance there. Let's go ahead and set up a pasture right next to our food mill, just like so. And let's have this food mill transition over to producing animal feed. 
Now every recipe at the animal pasture is gonna require feed, but most of them are also gonna require water. So that tells us that we need to start doing some additional research because we don't have the ability to send water unlocked yet. That's gonna require the fluid pipe research, which fortunately we can afford, so let's go ahead and grab that. And let's go ahead and set up a small place to produce fluid pipes. You can take a look at our town center specialization, see that fluid pipes are affected by that. So if possible, we want to set up our fluid pipe manufacturing within the town. Let's do this over here uh, towards the back half of these trees. Now fluid pipes are made at a lumber mill, so we're gonna place a forester. And you'll notice I placed the forester outside the town limits. That's because we're we're not worrying about the, uh, the production of wood, which is what the forest will do, but the lumber mill producing the actual pipes we're gonna place inside the inside the city. Set up a ramp and then a chute. And then lastly, we can build a barn in order to collect these. Let's go ahead and add fluid pipes to our panel so we can track how many we've got. And we'll get a steady trickle of those. We'll end up implementing a bunch of those underneath our town because we can provide water to houses. Uh, but let's go ahead and set up a well and a uh, connection to our animal pasture real quick. Now the animal pasture can produce a number of things. It can produce uh, egg, raw chicken, and milk, which are food items, and then it can also produce wool and leather, which are used for for the production of clothing. It also can produce fertilizer, but that's a byproduct of a lot of other things, so we don't really need to focus on making fertilizer. What we can do, though, is go ahead and set aside uh, that fertilizer, and so we can set up a barn here that will take some of that and uh, and store it so that if we do want to use it in the production of farm tiles, for example, we have that available to us. Now let's go ahead and use this animal pasture to start producing towards our warm coat. Now the warm coat is made at the tailors, uh, which is currently locked, but fortunately we can afford. So let's go ahead and unlock that. Now warm coats are gonna be made from wool. We can get that from our, our pasture. They also made from leather, which we can also get from our pasture. And they're also gonna need shirts. The tailor actually produces shirts from cloth, uh, but cloth is produced in a workshop. And again, it's produced from wool. So let's go ahead and have this make shirts and warm coats. And let's set up a workshop next door to act as an intermediary processing step. Now the tailor is getting everything it needs to produce warm coats. Now warm coats can be sold for red coins, a ton of red coins. Let's go ahead and grab a worker, have them pick up those warm coats and sell them at the general goods store. And that will be a production chain all complete. And eventually those warm coats will trickle in and we will uh, start to see a large influx of red coins as well. So that's actually one of our three remaining sort of challenges ticked off. That will eventually uh, finish out. Let's go ahead and set up our next remaining challenge, which is our sandwich production. Now sandwiches are made in a kitchen, which we also need to unlock. So let's go ahead and grab that. And while we're here, we have 200 recipes. So let's go ahead and pick up the wooden, or the cloth conveyor belts, cloth conveyor belts. And then as we get the red coins and more research trickling in, we'll unlock the wooden railways so we can get tech level four. But let's take a look at the kitchen. Now the kitchen has a number of items that benefit from our processing specialization. So we're gonna take advantage of that. But our goal is to make a sandwich and a sandwich is made from bread, cheese, and cooked chicken. Well, we produce cheese, bread, and cooked chicken here, but we're gonna need flour, raw chicken, fuel, cloth, and milk in order to make sandwiches. So let's go ahead and start working on that. Our forester can use a chute to deliver the wood to our kitchen for fuel, so that's easy enough. We can set up a farm in order to gather up the wheat that we're going to need. And then we'll send that wheat into a food mill, like so, or we can turn it into flour and animal feed. Now here we can set the wheat to go directly into the food mill, and the food mill can send the flour directly into the kitchen, but we are gonna need another animal pasture here in order to produce our cheese. Now to produce cheese, we're going to need milk, which is made from animal feed and water. We'll go ahead and set that up, and let's go ahead and set up another 
well to provide the water we need along with our pipes. So, and that should start producing the milk we need. Now we're also going to need raw chicken, which just takes the feed. And we're gonna do a couple of, of outputs from this, take the items from our animal pasture and deliver them to the kitchen. So we'll deliver our raw chicken along one belt and our milk along the other belt. And last but not least, so, so that takes care of our milk, that takes care of our flour, our fuel, and our raw chicken. The last ingredient we need is cloth. So let's go ahead and set up a workshop to do cloth there. And we have the option of doing that cloth from our animal pasture, but we also have some cotton over here that might be good. Um, so let's go ahead and set up a, another farm to gather up that cotton, like so. And then because that's elevated, we can use shoots. Take that cotton and deliver it to our workshop where it will be turned into cloth and then delivered via conveyor to our kitchen. So with all of that out of the way, we should start to see inputs of our various components. And as soon as we get some cheese, we should see our first sandwich being produced. And there it goes. And so that is sandwiches all squared away. Now, like with our warm coats, that's gonna take a while because we don't have very fast production here, um, but we can go ahead and sell that sandwich. Now sandwiches are actually sold at a tavern, which we don't have. Let's go ahead and construct a tavern. We can go ahead and place that there. It's still connected by road to all of our houses. And let's get a worker who will gather up the sandwiches and sell them at the tavern. Now again, if we want to increase the speed of this, we can increase our grain production a great deal. We have plenty of workers to work with. We can increase our food production at our mill and then the number of workers at our farm as well. And that will greatly speed along production across the board. I don't think we need quite so many workers though. So let's go ahead and pair those, pair those back just a little bit. All right, and with our sandwiches and warm coats being produced, the last thing we need to focus on in order to complete the level is uh, unlocking tech level four. Now we've already done the research to get our wood cloth conveyor belts, but we also need wooden rails. So let's go ahead and unlock that. And let's take a look at these two items. Wooden cloth conveyor belts are made in a workshop from wooden wheels and cloth, and wooden rails are made from planks and stone in a workshop. So we can have a single workshop if we can find a good place that will produce cloth, stone, and planks. Now it turns out that neither of these recipes will benefit from our production specialty. So we can build this anywhere on the map and it will work out just fine. So let's take a quick look around for some place that has stone, cotton, and wood. All right, it looks like this place, that we, just, just behind our uh, cotton farm for our cheesecloth uh, will serve us just fine here. So let's go ahead and set up a forester to gather the wood we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and set up a farm to gather the cotton we're gonna need. And let's place a couple of workers who will handle our stone production for us. All right, with our raw materials gathered, let's go ahead and turn this into some, some craftables. Uh, and all of our end, end line production is gonna be done in a workshop here. We're gonna be producing our wood cloth, our wood wheel, our cloth, our cloth conveyor belt, and our wooden rail, all from this one uh, workshop. And the only remaining inputs, and the only thing we need input it are stone, planks, and cotton. So we've got our stone, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and redirect this conveyor line over here, like so. And then we can take a conveyor line for the cotton as well. We could also use chutes for this. And then let's set up a lumber mill that will take our wood and turn that into planks. And then we can have a conveyor belt. And last but not least, let's set up a barn and outputs for our two end components. Now we're also gonna use our workers to max out production here. So we're definitely going to increase the number of workers at our workshop because that is where we're sort of gathering all of these materials. It looks like we're getting plenty of cotton coming in and plenty of stone as well, but we may want to increase the number of workers at our forester and lumber mill in order to uh, help speed things along. 
And so now all there is to do to finish out the map is to let things sort of go and, and fill up. Let's see what's what the delay is with our warm coat production though. It seems like we're we're paused out there. All right, it looks like the delay on our, our warm coats was simply uh, we were producing wool before we were producing leather and it just needed to sort of fully backlog. Now that it's done that, those are back under production and there wasn't actually any sort of long-term issue there, just a, a, a minor delay as the production lines filled. All right, and with our uh, conveyor belts and rail stone, we can unlock tech level four and our last couple warm coats being produced. All right, and with our last warm coat being produced, that is going to wrap things up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Factory Town. In our next episode, we're gonna dive into level three of the campaign. We're gonna make use of our elevated conveyor lines and our discrete factories and efficient town layouts in order to breeze through that level two. Thank you guys again for watching. My name is Ben Nakoba. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I will see you soon and I hope you have an efficient day.